Can you see that ridiculous dog? Fargo! You are so silly! Good morning, everybody. I... You're a woolly. Good morning, everybody. I'm just using my phone as a mirror. I don't know if anybody is interested. How would I know? I don't know how I would know what you lot are really interested in, but I thought I'd blow dry my hair. <laughs> so you can see how, when I do it properly, how, how I do it, because I've had some nice comments about my hair when I've blow dried it properly. So I thought if anyone was interested, I'd show you. I'll um, probably turn the sound down and not talk now, and I'll probably speed this up because it'll be noisy. So I use this thing, which is a Tresemme blower. Um, it's it's rigid. I used to have one that twirled around, which was pretty good, but this was just cheap. It's got... Um, <laughs> Have you got an itch? You have an itchy ear. Right. Okay, back to my hair. It's got cold, warm, and hot. I usually stick it on warm. Now I'll take down the next layer. I usually do it in three or four layers. Ow. <laughs> Looking a little bit like a mushroom now. Split this bit into two. I don't have a lot of hair, so it doesn't take me that long to dry it. We're on like, I don't know, three minutes now. What have you got, Margo? What have you got? You need that as least. You don't need that. It's not for you. I'll probably put the title of this as how I blow dry my classic bob which means that there's probably people here who are not normally here uh this is usually a daily life vlogging channel with a big emphasis on homemaking and crafting so after i've blow dried my hair there's nothing else here today for you <laughs> No more hair tips, beauty tips, health tips or anything like that. So uh, before you go, please click the like button because the problem with videos like this for people like me is that if you suddenly start to appeal to a different audience and the retention isn't good, then you drop down in the YouTube algorithm and... Um, you um yeah it slows up the growth of your channel basically basically so i'd really appreciate it if you were just here to watch somebody lazily blow dry their hair then just uh, click like on your on your way out thanks ever so much right last bit Obviously, it's not going to go right today. And also, I realise that I should have my head around here somewhere. Like that. But I've stuck my phone in the mirror with a bit of blue tack in the wrong place. <laughs> I have used some heat protective spray. I 
had this for a dozen years and I've only used half of it. Um, that's why I don't like to blow dry my hair too often because I don't like using all these products. And then I've got some of this Davines oil. I just use the tiniest little bit. So this will last me a million years as well. Then I'll just drag it through the ends just to try and clump it together a bit, stop it being so fluffy. I hate the way products feel in my hair, but you can't really blow dry it without, can you? There we go. That's it. We're done. Let's hope it looks all right. There. And it now feels all really light and poofy. <laughs> and I'll probably end up tucking it behind my ears a bit later on with a little French preppy feel. But yeah, that's it. That's me done. Happy days. See you later for my usual regular stuff. I don't know what we're doing today. Oh, I do know what we're doing today. My mum and dad are coming. My mum and dad are divorced, but they're coming together. And I love that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more once I'm dressed. Hi, and welcome back to the 70s on this side. And the, what do we call this era? Are we the 20s? We're not, are we? Because the 20s was 100 years ago. Itchy eyebrow. Oh, Margo. Can you hear us squeaking? That's because Bunny's just barked at something. Now Margo thinks there's something to be worried about. I'm going to do a little gauge swatch of this Noro. Oh, it's actually really quite thin. I was thinking I'd get away with a 5.5. .5. The pattern calls for a 5, but this is really thin, I reckon. We'll have a rethink, guys. We'll have a rethink. My mum and dad are coming in a bit, so I've just got probably 20 minutes to sit and do this, and then I've got other things I need to do before they arrive. Um, my mum and dad, I've mentioned that they are divorced, and they've been divorced for a long time, since I was... Well, I don't actually remember all the time frames. Um, they started splitting up when I was sort of in the upper sixth, November of my upper sixth. So what would I have been? I would have been 17. Yeah. And then it kind of, they tried to make it work and then it didn't, then it did, then it didn't. And there was a bit of to in and fro in. And eventually when, when I was in university in my first year they properly parted permanently <clears throat> forever and although it was a really horrible period for me and my mum and dad um the one thing that my parents have always always done always done without fail is they've said we've got to be grown-ups about this and Gaynor is our shared daughter and we can't make it any more difficult for her than it already is. So I have been really fortunate in that my mum and dad have managed to forge a way forward and they are friends. They're really good friends. They're very close now. It wasn't always that way. It's taken a long time for them to reach this point. There's been a, a lot of... Um, probably tongue biting and forgiveness and moving on and all of that but they are good mates. I um, was never more grateful for that than when I got married, when Toby and I got married and my mum and dad were there as my mum and dad and they put aside the fact that they weren't a couple anymore and they were just celebrating the fact that their daughter was was marrying the love of her life and um 
that we were just going to have a really beautiful day, which we did. And uh, all my friends were just... I think my mum's mum and dad's divorce probably affected my friends a lot more than most people's other parents' divorce, do you know what I mean, <laughs> affected them because my my house where I lived, my home, was always open to all of my friends and um, and my mum and dad, my mates used to just come and ask advice from my mum and dad and um, just, I don't know, they, I don't, I don't know, it was just really quite lovely. My friends love, still love my mum and dad very much. So, um, my friends at our wedding were a bit like, this is freaking me out. I can't cope. Your mum and dad are holding hands. I can't handle it. <laughs> but that's, you know, what, how it's been. And my mum and dad's partners knew spouses were always really cool with that there was never any jealousy or worry or anything and my dad and my stepdad are pretty good mates actually they are both ex-navy so they go along to some navy events together and um, my mum and mags were were good friends um mags died underneath the beautiful patchwork blanket that my mum had made her so you know it's quite it's quite a, a remarkable thing but something I'm really grateful for, the fact that that two of the most important people in my life ever haven't made it difficult for me to talk about them to one another. It's, it's just been, I've just been very, very fortunate. And I'm very grateful for that. Now, after my, my wedding, I didn't see my mum and dad together at the same time for years, years and years and years, probably 15, 13, 14, 15 years, something like that. And then for one, some reason, one birthday, we all went out together and we had such a lovely time. And we each said, there's something very, very special about just being the three of us. And so now we do it quite regularly. I see my mum and my dad together and it's a lovely atmosphere. It's a lovely, we've got this sort of rapport between us all. It's really special. And I don't know whether it's just special because they're divorced or whether it's special because um, that's just how it is. Or whether it's special because I'm an only child or if this is just how it is for adult children to just be adult children without their kids, their partners and just their parents. I don't know. Perhaps it is. Maybe it is. Maybe if you've got brothers and sisters, it's special when it's just you guys and just your mum and dad. I don't know. But for me, it's really nice. I love it. I really, really love it. And there's quite a lot of banter and and also my dad, um, because he's got a brain injury from having had um, a weird medical problem with his brain. Um, he's got blank patches in his memory. So between mum and I, we help fill that gap for him. We We replace his memories for him. We help him put them back in his brain. And that's really lovely. And my mum's got an astonishing memory. So she she can, um, she sets me straight all the time. But then sometimes I think, no, I remember this so strongly. I think you've not remembered it correctly. But she does generally have a better memory than me these days. I used to have a really good memory until I had children and then lost it, totally lost it. And I really miss it. <laughs> Having a good memory actually makes you more intelligent because you can remember stuff and so you can do the connective thinking. But if you can't remember stuff, then you're stuffed. Right, back in a minute. That's a nice fabric. Look. That looks nice. I like that these two here and they're playing me up. I don't 
playing it, Polly. She's going on your blog, Mum and Dad. Yeah, that one is bit, has rejected the ginger crunch. Oh, you're videoing again. Oh, yes. <laughs> and my mother had to finish it off. Yeah, and bail you out again. Yeah, and now he's, he's had how many of those Rice like Krispie this? Cakes we've had. One. Like and now he's on to dangerous okay? truffles. Yeah, that's better, yeah. Oh, he approves of them then. Stop picking on me. You need <laughs> picking on. I ain't comb here, hang on, I've got comb here. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. It's a standard joke now. He's getting a haircut. Hang on. Oh, oh, he's here. Oh, for God's here sake. Go. Hello. You know you look like Torchy, the battery boy. Cool. That's showing your <laughs> bloody, that's showing your bloody age. <laughs> You're, you're older than me, so I can still remember the song. How did it go? Torchy, torchy, the battery boy. <laughs> He's a walkie talkie toy. <laughs> See his light being so bright. I'm up in the God, they're off. <laughs> Google it, you'll see we're right. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> How do I remember that? She's gone. Yeah, how do you remember oh, that? No memory, and yet you can't not... remember. We just, you just displayed that you lost your memory. <laughs> a second ago. Yeah, funny, isn't it? He's, 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 he wants a haircut. At the time. <laughs> well, you haven't lost that part of your life. You've lost the middle bit. The middle bit. Yeah. Um, and he's even brought a mirror so you can see what I'm doing because apparently I did it wrong last oh, time. Oh, he's a control freak. Um, this mirror is was. My mirror when I was a little girl in my bedroom for a long time. Yeah, that comes from Great Mills. Did it? And then yeah. we did a swap, I think, and you had this, and I got the one with that the came with from the wings. Great Mills in Paul when it was on that big roundabout. Don't ask me. Yeah. The cats are like Great Mills. No, it used to be called Great Mills. They used then they in, they went into liquidation, um, but they also did kitchens and things like that. Told you she had to go oh, home. Sick, huh? Oh dear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poser. Oh, 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 go get the mirror. As soon as the camera comes out, he performs, poses, doesn't he? Look at him, turn around and have a nice haircut. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh salon gainer, salon cuckoo. If you think you're being paid for this crap, you can think on. Isn't it? It's my dad is so mean mm. to me. <laughs> I love my girl. Oh dear, oh dear. I love my know. girl. <laughs> oh, she's still bloody filming. Right, mum and dad have gone. I'm just walking the dog. It's piddling with rain. <laughs> it was sunny this morning. I should have done it then, but I didn't get my act together. Bunny is not happy with me because she hates walking in the rain. I suspect she'll go to the loo and then she'll turn around and want to come back again. We've had an absolutely lovely day. I lost count of how many cups of tea and coffee <laughs> mum and dad drank. We actually went out to a cafe just down the road and we had proper coffees out, so that was really nice. And... Um, I don't know what that was then. That's me being mad. Oh, I don't know if any of this footage is usable because of this microphone. Um, yeah, we've had a lovely time. Cut my dad's hair. And mum really like, oh, mum, mum, you forgot to take a slice of that ginger crunch home. And dad forgot to take some Rice Krispie cakes. Oh, buddy. <laughs> pulling me off my feet then oh never mind um i've lost my train of thought now i'll see i'll see you later oh i know what it was i was about to moan kelly lay family yarn messaged me this morning and said your wool should be with you this morning postman came no wool but he's got a pile of stuff and i said oh no i was hoping my wool would come today and he said um Oh, sorry, this is all of yours that I could fit in the van. Um, we're not able to bring everything out for everybody at the moment. We're short-staffed. So there's a whole crate load back at the sorting office for the hill. 
And I said, well, we've only seen you twice this week. Is, is that because you're short of staff? And he's like, yeah. So basically what's happening is they aren't, they aren't, they're only doing two deliveries a week. And because they're only doing two deliveries a week, they don't have the space on each delivery to deliver everything. So there's a backlog. So Kelly's paid first class service for me to receive my post and Royal Mail aren't delivering a first class service. It's broken. The system is broken. Yeah, it's broken, the system's broken. Um, it's not the end of the world for me because I can wait for my yarn. It's not a problem. But it is just a bit frustrating that you pay for a service and you don't get get that service. It's like anything really, isn't it? But what can you do? My friend messaged me this morning her name's Sharon and she's got the SCR1TNO podcast. I like to call it Scritno podcast, but it's not. It's SCR1TNO. And she said, she sent me a text saying that she'd looked up what the collective noun was for um, a group of cuckoos. And that was off the back of me calling you guys the equivalent of having the Google in my pocket. And I called you all Googlies. And uh, she thought, oh, I wonder, we're all like little cuckoos. I wonder what a collective noun is for cuckoos. You won't believe what it is. It's an asylum of cuckoos. Now, what came first? Calling mad people cuckoo or calling a collective noun of cuckoos an asylum because, tuck in darling, we're on the road. I just had to tuck in because we're on the road and cars wanted to get by. Um, yeah, I wonder what came first. Fun that, isn't it? I love it. My favourite is the collective noun for a group of rabbits is a fluffle. And I was quite right with Bunny. She went to the toilet and now she is a pulling my arm off to get back home. She's so Spanish. She likes the good weather, not the bad weather. Kids have kicked us out of the den, haven't they? Well, yeah, that's... Ooh. That's okay. That's all right. Look what us bando's got us. Happy Friday night. Happy Friday Ooh, oh, I night. I couldn't see that then. Have you got it? I was looking at the wrong... You want a bit of ginger... ginger crunch? No, thanks. Makes my tongue sore. Does it? And my teeth. Cheers. Cheers, come here then. Hmm? Come here then. Cheers. Here's funny. Your hair's lovely, darling. He's just got out of the shower. Look what he's wearing. He's wearing his jumper. And he's trying to fix the telly. It's not behaving itself. Happy Friday night. I'm going to sign off now. We have had torrential rain here. Um, I've uh, got nothing much to report. <laughs> I've got nothing else to say today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.